A lot of snow, but the wind. <laughs>
to really focus and pay attention and put my time into that. So I didn't throw the application together. I really focused on making sure I actually put my best foot. Being able to physically attend the conference was absolutely free. So for the list makers, it's free. For the fellows, it's free. For the scholars, it's free. Other people can attend, but they have to pay to go. Um, and I believe the tickets, they're pretty expensive. They do not provide any sort of travel stipend or housing stipend. So if you do choose to go, attending it is free, but you do have to pay for your flight or if you're gonna drive and you gotta pay for your lodgings. You most likely will have to miss class if you attend the summit because when I went, it was Sunday through Wednesday. So I, I wanted to go the entire time, but they do send you a breakdown beforehand saying, everything for the most part that's going to be going on so you can look it over and decide you know i'll be there sunday through monday tuesday ish maybe not the whole time depending on what classes you have i had to email my teachers and say hi i'm going to be missing these days this is what i'm attending this is why i think this should count as an excused absence quick update i'm looking on the website now and they actually are still having the summit i know that coronavirus has canceled a lot of large social gatherings but according to their website they are still having the summit so don't be discouraged i still think everyone should hurry and apply this email is to inform you that you've been selected as a forbes under 30 scholar for the 2018 under 30 summit in boston running from september 30th to october 3rd the forbes under 30 scholars program gives students a complimentary pass to attend each day of the under 30 summit with more than 7,000 attendees 24 content tracks an under 30 village larger than a football field, a music festival, a food festival, a bar crawl. The 2018 Under 30 Summit will be the greatest gathering of game changers and entrepreneurs ever. Think compelling content, celebrity entertainment, one-on-ones with big time investors, a day of service, tons of startups all at once. One of the things that I think stood out within my application is my resume, just because I made sure that I tried to look as versatile as possible. So within all of my internships, they were in different fields, whether it be sports or entertainment or politics. Then I had a lot of on-campus experience where I was the vice president of an organization, but then I was the historian of another organization. I was an editor for another one. I was a producer for another one. So just try to have a lot of different positions across your campus-wide activities as well. And then I would just say to show some personality on the application. It's not as if you're applying for a job, so you're trying to push your skills necessarily because within the summit you don't really need your skills i don't need to write i don't need to edit i don't need to produce anything so within the application i wouldn't really talk up my skills i would talk up my knowledge and i would talk up things that i know and things that i value and how this summit will be important to me and then just pitch yourself talking about how you know you're going to be successful say hi I am first name, last name, and I'm gonna be successful because I'm great at X, Y, and Z. I would just say also to pitch yourself, considering that it's not a job application, you don't really have to go super into the details of what software is your good. I would say to show some things outside of your resume that you're interested in, whether it be something completely random, like I'm big into physical therapy, or I love to grow fruits in my garden just to show that you're more than just a walking resume. A huge part of the entire summit was networking. So they have this app where you go, you log on and you create a profile. Um, it, was, it was only on your phone, but when you created this profile, you included your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your email, your job profession, your contact number, all of that. So you gave them basically a quick rundown of all of your social media handles and how people can network with you. Once you had the app, you would link it to the lanyard and the credential that they gave you. And then you would go around and you would be able to put your credential against someone else's and they would sync. And then you just network with that person and you gave them all of your social media handles and all that information and they gave you theirs. So it was really cool and it would light up uh, when you pressed it. And it was nice because I was going around meeting all of these different people and at the end, it can sometimes be a little awkward to say, would you mind giving me your contact info? But during the conversation, we would talk about, oh, isn't this thing so cool? Yeah, I just learned how to use it. Ha, 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 ha. And then you would just click with one another, and then boom, you don't have to have that awkward conversation trying to wonder, should I ask them? Is this appropriate? I'm nervous. They're a higher up at this company. I'm worried because I don't want to make it seem like I'm asking for a job. I don't want to annoy them. None of that really happened there because it was just a quick boop and then it's done. The track that I chose was for people in media. So a lot of the panels that I was able to attend were them talking about 
journalism and the digital world and writing and becoming an author, things like that. But the names of the other panels were more of interest to me just because I'm interested in entertainment journalism and they had a track that was art, music, and film, I believe. And at that point, that was everything to me. So I ended up changing my track. So I would just say, when you all do become these Forbes Under 30 Scholars, because I know you will, when you become one, try to see if you can look at some of the other panels and some of the other tracks because you may want to switch over. Once you get selected, you're getting selected because you are a mover and shaker in your field. And I think it would be interesting for people and I would encourage you all to just maybe look into the other fields because there's stuff that you might be able to learn and then take that and apply that to your designated field. Once you submit your application, there is no interview process. So it's not like they're gonna email you asking you if you're free for a phone interview or a Skype interview or in person, none of that. It's just you submit the application online, you'll hear back within a couple of weeks if you've gotten it and then they'll give you your code to get in for free, then you just go. This year the summit will be taking place in Detroit. It is October 18th through the 21st. Forbes loves to do a breakdown showing the analytics of the summit. So it says they have over 200 world-class speakers over 9,000 global attendees, over 500 top investors, over 175 journalists. Their social reach extends over 2.3 billion and they have over 20 focus tracks. I would just encourage you to look at your hobbies and extracurriculars and some of the clubs that you're in and see if there's a track that matches any of your passion projects before instantly assuming that the track you want is gonna be the same as your major. Another really nice thing about the summit is that on the panels, they have a lot of celebrity guests and it'll be, for instance, they'll have an athlete, but they won't necessarily be talking about playing sports all day. They'll talk about the business side of sports or how they're getting into the agricultural business because of where they live and they notice the drought and how they wanna fix that. It'll have a lot of celebrities that are talking about things that you wouldn't necessarily think that they were knowledgeable about. Some of the past speakers include Serena Williams, Normani, Kevin Durant, Quavo, The Chainsmokers, Blake Griffin, Jessica Alba. It's just a lot of people on here. I really encourage you all to get on the website and just scroll through. They have Kendrick Lamar, Michael Phelps. The Forbes Under 30 Scholars Program is aimed to help students from diverse backgrounds and meant to be an inclusive space for everyone. I definitely agree with that because while I was there, I met people from everywhere. And then it says, Forbes Under 30 represents the movers and shakers, innovators and leaders of tomorrow. Diversity and inclusion are at the core of the program, celebrating students across every gender, race, ethnicity, religion, and sexual orientation. The opportunity is open to juniors, seniors, and graduate students. We are primarily looking for students majoring in a technology or business related field but all are welcome to apply. Though it says that they are primarily looking for students that are major surrounding business or tech, I wouldn't let that discourage you because I was a journalism major in the School of Communications. Within the email, it does say that they chose 1,000 students to go. So I would just say once the application is out for 2020, to just apply as soon as possible because you wouldn't want to be the 1,001 person to apply and then they're like, oh, Sorry, we're already filled up. You really never know how many applications that they get. I would assume it's a large number because they are taking international students as well. So I would just say once it comes out, give yourself maybe a day to really read through and figure out everything that you need. And then another day to really sit there and hone in on every response. I would just try to submit it by day three or four because the deadline will come fast and you don't want to look as if you waited to the last minute, but you do want to seem detail oriented as well and make sure that there are no issues or typos or errors in your application. If you all have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them under the video below. Or of course, you can always message me on social media. I do talk for a living, so I've noticed that these videos are kind of long. So I'm just gonna stop here so it can be nice and condensed. And I just wanna thank you for watching and I hope that you subscribe to my channel.